the main problem that I see is right now we have all the governments in the world, most of them, printing huge amounts of money, which has never happened before. It's leading, it's going to lead to big problems down the road. Throughout history, when you print staggering amounts of money, it's led eventually to problems and we have never in world history had so much money printing as we have now. Well, uh, all this money printing, I, I, I have uh, had more commodity investing, let's put it that way, because of the money printing throughout history. When you print a lot of money, it has led to inflation. And inflation means higher prices, which means commodities will go up. And as I look around the world, I mean, you can see that bonds are definitely a bubble. Bonds have never been this expensive in world history. Property in many countries is a bubble. You go to Korea or New, New Zealand, many places, it's, it's a bubble. Uh, stocks are beginning to form bubbles in many places. I mean, Apple goes up every day, you know, 10 cent, things like that. The only, play, only things that are still down are commodities. I mean, silver is down 60% from its all-time high. Sugar is down 60%. Those are not bubble numbers when you talk about things that are down 60%. So commodities are the cheapest place, and I've invested more in agriculture and other commodities in the last year or so. Even in Asia, these days, the market seems to be overpriced, especially like the property market, the real estate. In places like even Thailand, where it's been cheap for many years, it's like really expensive now. So uh, what do you think that's heading? Of course, bubbles are ending in crash usually. So what do you think is happening there? Well, eventually, two things will happen. One, things will just get so overpriced, there won't be anybody left to buy, and then they start selling, and then there's nobody left to buy, and the prices go down a lot. Uh, but also, interest rates will go higher. Eventually, interest rates have never been this low in world history. So when interest rates start going higher, a lot of people are going to have to sell. There are always some people are overextended, and when they start having to sell, it usually crescendos and then you have a big bear market. I'm sure the next bear market we have will be the worst in my lifetime. We had a big bear market in 2008 because of too much debt. Well, since 2008, I mean, the debt has skyrocketed everywhere. We've never seen so much debt. So the next bear market has to be the worst in my lifetime because of all this debt. In case of a big crash like this, what do you think is going to be the opportunity? Is it going to be in commodities or how do you think investors or traders can benefit from this? Well, as I said, when there's inflation, prices go up. And if you own the things that go up in price, you know, whether it's sugar or silver or whatever, you usually will make money or you certainly will protect yourself. So the best opportunities I see are in real assets. Also, though, whenever you have a big disaster, it usually leads to opportunities. For instance, right now, travel and tourism and entertainment are all demolished in many countries, and there are probably opportunities there developing. For I mean, I bought Chinese wine stocks recently because people stopped going out. They stopped going to restaurants, stopped going to bars. So maybe there's an opportunity there. Often when there is a disaster, it does lead to an opportunity. Well, I said, bonds are the biggest bubble they've ever been. That's not an opportunity. Commodities are very cheap. Silver's down 60%. Didn't you hear what I said? This is an opportunity. Bonds are not an opportunity. Maybe I'm not making myself clear. Some markets are certainly great opportunities. Some are not. Well, I am not selling uh, anything yet, and I'm not selling short anything yet. Uh, I see bubbles starting to develop, um, but at the moment, it doesn't look like we're in enough enough of a bubble, maybe bonds, but nothing else uh, for me to sell short yet. Many stocks in the U.S., which is the biggest market, are not up a lot. Some are in a clear bubble, but many stocks this year are down, or last year were down uh, in 2021. So it's not a full-fledged bubble yet, uh, but it looks like it's going to develop into a full-fledged bubble, at which point I'll have to sell and I'll start selling short. I hope. I hope I'm smart enough. I think what you need to do is to watch the desire to trade, to figure out when it's time to sell the bubble. I, I don't know. Uh, bubbles, bubbles usually ruin two kinds of people. They ruin the skeptics first, the people who say this is a bubble and it's crazy. Then they get ruined, 
And then the people who believe in the bubble get ruined because then the bubble eventually collapses and they lose everything because they thought it was real. So I don't know. I'm not very good at market timing. Uh, I have been around bubbles before. I have sold bubbles. I have shorted bubbles. But bubbles can be very, very confusing. But when bubbles come, everything collapses, or nearly everything, not everything. You know, uh, most things disappear in the 19, let's use 1999. That was a recent bubble in the U.S. It was the dot-com bubble. Most or many of the dot-com stocks, which were not real companies, some of them, totally collapsed and disappeared. Some survived and did well. I mean, Amazon is now a great, great, great success. Uh, but if you shorted at Amazon in that bubble, you would have made a lot of money for a while. But it is a company which went on to become a great success. Uh, usually, there's always somebody that survives, but most bubble stocks disappear. I told, I told you, watch the desire to trade. Uh, I, it, always somebody who will survive. You look at their balance sheets, you look at their business, you look at the competition, you look at the people, or the people, smart people. No, it's, it's the same thing that you look, would look at when you're trying to decide on any investment. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, it's more difficult in a bubble because usually there's a lot more competition uh, it, in, a, in a bubble. New, many new companies start up and you have to decide which ones are really sound. But it's the same thing. Investing is pretty much the same always. I didn't say it was easy. I just said it's pretty much the same. Well, these days, uh, nearly everything is a fact. I mean, the Internet makes everything instantly. We can know what's happening in Korea and New York instantly uh, all over the world. There's no such thing as a, a very few remote markets now that we do not know about or cannot find out about as soon as we want to and invest. You know, we can invest in many markets and in many industries uh, almost immediately because of the Internet. However, there's a difference in information and in judgment. If 100 people go into a room and they all hear the same information at the same time, most of them will not get it right. Judgment, judgment is the hard thing. And I don't know how to teach judgment. You ask about some successful investments before, but well, for whatever reason, they have good judgment and they get the same information that other people get, but they know how to use judgment different. I don't know how to teach it. I wish I did. Well, the most important lesson that I have learned is only invest in what you yourself know a lot about. Now, everybody listening to this knows a lot about something, whether it's cars or fashion or sports or something. And if you stay with what you know, what you yourself know, don't listen to the internet, don't listen to the TV, don't listen to anything. Everybody knows a lot about something. And if I told you, you can only have 20 investments in your life, you would be very careful. You wouldn't jump around all the time. You would wait until you see something that you know is going to be successful. Then you would do research and you would invest and you would probably become a successful investor. Now, some people would say, but that's boring. If you want to be successful. Don't worry about being boring. Be boring and be very successful. That is a good advice. The most sure. important lesson is don't listen to other people. The most important lesson is to stay with what you yourself know a lot about. Read as much as you can. You must know about markets. You must know about the world. You know, must know what's going on. But again, stay with what you know. If I told you to buy something, you should not buy it. Maybe you should go and do some research. Maybe you should learn about it. But do not buy something based on what I or anybody else says, unless you yourself know a lot about it. I know people don't want to hear that. You know, everybody wants a hot tip. Everybody wants to be rich this month. Just give me one hot tip. Hot tips will ruin you. Hot tips will make you bankrupt. Stay away from hot tips. Well, I mean, every, as I said, everybody wants to be rich this month. I wish this were easy. I said before, most people, both professional and non-professional, do not make money in the markets and never have. It's the not everybody thinks it's easy. It looks easy. Everybody said, I could have bought Apple. 
No, most people did not buy Apple, you know, uh, back in those days. Most people did not buy the things that they think look easy. This is not an easy way to make money, and it never has been and never will be. It's always hard and hard work. You have to be disciplined. If you have a passion for it, by all means, do it, do it, do it, because eventually you will be probably very good at it if that's one of your passions. You know, Warren Buffett, you asked about him before. It was his passion since he was very young. Uh, and it led to great success. Anybody who has a passion about something usually gets to be pretty good at it, whatever it is. So if you have a passion for something, I urge you to pursue it and do it more and Before more. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.